Here we are today in my machete house. Machete house. Machete house. We're going from crack house to new development. Every single property I've ever bought has been kind of the worst property on the street. Pretty much every single time the neighbors come by, they're super happy with the changes and the progress. Everything's changed. The whole neighborhood has changed because of the changes that you can make. Hey guys, welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Investing Channel. Uh, as you can see, we're in kind of a mess right now. You may remember me from the channel before. My name is James. Previously, uh, I was on the channel on my first property pretty much ever in February 2019 or 2020, sorry. This is James Fernandez and we're back after three months of renovations at his duplex in London, Ontario. It's been uh, about three months of pretty hard work, but it's um, I think gonna be worth it. There's still a little bit left to do, but let's yeah. go inside and show you. All right, let's check it out. smokes dude yeah she's ready almost a little few things left to go but Man. this is uh, this is it so far come on in since OREC 2019 you've you've acquired how many units uh, it's after May 31st it's gonna be 13 and uh, here we are today in my machete house machete house machete house <laughs> as many of you uh, who follow me on Instagram are aware. Peter's with me here, uh, just for sa safety, security, and uh, a little bit of film, of course. But uh, take, a, take a look around, you'll still see some of the signs of the, I guess, um, unfortunate events that kind of happen here. But we're here today to try and move past that, move forward, and figure out a plan. We're going from crack house to new development, and uh, trying to figure out how to work with the city to create something that'll really add value in this rapid transit, high density part of the town. So meetings with city councilors, meeting with Heritage, meeting with a bunch of different groups of people to try and create an opportunity for me as well as the city so that something can be created that really adds value to this part of the town. Let's take a quick tour. So in here we got a couple bedrooms. Um, it's been mostly cleared out of course, there's still a little bit to go but um, we're in process right now for demo permits, for heritage, for a bunch of different things. So it's not really worth spending time and money on this type of stuff that doesn't really do anything when it'll just be all torn away and gone. So a couple bedrooms, entrance, we'll take a quick walk upstairs later but I know most people are interested in the basement. We'll probably head down there, Peter, watch your step on your way down. Um, this used to be a kitchen, used to be a bathroom. Um, from some of the, the videos and pictures that you guys saw before, this was kind of where the big mess was on the ground. Uh, you might, might remember just even from like the Halloween stuff with uh, the Finlay group. Um, this is kind of where some of that was from. So, what exactly happened here, James? So yeah, um, it was, uh, the, the reason I call it the machete house is because uh, just basically a few days after I bought it, uh, people send me links to an article, um, newspaper article, hey, there's a machete attack in this, like, London property. Um, by this my London property. Um, yeah, so what, what happened in here was the tenants stole something from someone they shouldn't have stole something from, and uh, they found them, and they hunted them down, and machetes were involved. We can go into details later, DM me, <laughs> and we can uh, talk about that. Um, seems to be everyone's okay, uh, but missing maybe a few things here and there. Uh, we'll head down to the basement. Don't worry, they didn't leave anything behind. Um, here we go. There's not a lot of light down here, so we're gonna have to try and figure out maybe Peter's got some flash, or you can just try and uh, imagine what we're smelling and walking through down here. This is basically a fully empty basement. Um, some of you may remember these on the wall. So it's almost it's almost my hand size. So could have been uh, could have been me in one of my nightly stupors here. Um, down here, initially when I first bought the property, uh, it was mainly for that zoning. It was mainly for trying to make sure that I can have that long-term play and appreciation and uh, build something that actually adds value down here. But uh, if I were to buy and hold this thing, um, the ceilings are decent down here. Kind of smells like whatever it smells like, but uh, it could actually be a secondary suite. 
So <clears throat> let's get the hell out of here and head upstairs. <laughs> So since I bought the property, it's been broken into four times already. Um, actually, Peter and I walked up and it's actually been broken into recently. That door just got kicked in over there. And um, we'll board that up again. These are new. Someone's been in here recently. So, But we got uh, fresh maple syrup ready to go. This is uh, Canadian real estate investing after all. Let's head upstairs. So this uh, is perfect for a small family. We got some bedrooms for the kids, the master bedroom over here. Um, nice, light, south-facing windows. <laughs> oh man, it's, uh, it's brutal. We had a pest control issue in here before, but once we took away most of the fluids and uh, food, um, they, were, they left. So a cloth foot tub, if anyone wants it, Pickup only, lightly used. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's get out of here. Smile. So a little bit of plans, I guess, for this property. Um, I own the one right beside it as well. I'm trying to build something bigger on both of these. It's not something I've ever done before. It's something I'm kind of struggling with. But uh, from where you saw me last, um, that was my first property, a uh, little duplex. I've actually sold that since. And uh, the one beside it is actually the second property I ever bought ever. So kind of cool that we're coming back here. So we're about um, almost two years later. It'll be in February 2022. It'll be two years since I, since I bought that first one. And um, trying, to, trying to just learn new things and try to grow. Uh, a little bit of maybe shiny object syndrome. We're trying to, trying to figure out some new things here and there. But uh, I really do like that part of real estate. And that's kind of what I do is to learn new things and meet cool people. So um, that's where we are now. If anyone wants to come take any souvenirs, just hit me up in the DMs. <laughs> Feel free to take your pick. Awesome. And so you've just been a new real estate investor for the last couple of years, but obviously you're growing very fast and getting a lot of experience. And you just mentioned how like you have a property right here. And one of the things that you kind of mentioned behind the scenes before this is that, you know, if you buy a property right next to it, like it merges right. the, um, the titles. The titles. Right. So how, like, if you are able to discuss that, like, how do you like work around stuff like that? Sure. And if you wouldn't mind also too getting into how uh, here in London, there's like this bus rapid transit that's coming right. in and you're kind of working with the city to, you know, potentially change this into like commercial and retail and everything like that. Sure. Mind. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, we just briefly talked about my property next door and I had to buy this property kind of differently because I don't know if it's just in London um, or in Ontario or wherever, but if you buy properties right beside each other, for some weird reason, the, t the titles merge um, if you buy them under the same name. So basically what I needed to do in order to get around that is basically buy it under a separate name or buy it under a uh, joint title or buy it under my corp or buy it under, there's a bunch of different ways to get around it. Um, in this case, kind of a funny, funny story. Uh, I bought it with my wife, uh, my then not even Beyonce. Um, I put her on title, so we're 50-50 on title, and uh, I was just kind of jokingly saying, like, I uh, bought a rental property for you as your engagement present, and then shortly after that, I made that joke, uh, I get this article with this machete thing, so um, she's been teasing me about that ever since, <laughs> it's the worst engagement gift ever, um, but uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of the why on, on why I didn't want the title to merge because it gives me more flexibility. I can always automatically merge them later, but to sever land, it's a little bit more tricky. It costs, I don't know, 10 grand or so. Maybe you'll run into issues. I didn't want to deal with any of that up front. So moving forward from there. It, hold on, if, so if you would have just bought this property and put it under your name, if you're like a new real estate investor, would it just merge without you, you even knowing? And like, how does that process work? Like, yeah, um, I, I've luckily never done that. I've just been warned about it by all my professionals many, many times um, to make sure that like, even for title insurance and stuff like that, um, they want to make sure that you're not going to merge titles accidentally because the title insurance would have to cover if the lawyer messes that up severing it. Um, that is definitely a conversation for your legal professionals. Um, but from my professionals and my experience, 
uh, just make sure when you're buying stuff close together that even like if they're at 90 degrees, you don't want some weird part of the lot touching each other. That almost happened to me. Um, and they can again merge accidentally. So just make sure you do your due diligence there. Uh, it's so, a good thing to have a good uh, investor focused power team hell yeah. with you and have good mentors who like know and understand all the same. Yeah, there's so many mistakes to make and you can't possibly make them all. So you gotta learn from other people's mistakes. And uh, yeah, it's probably not in your best interest to try and make them all yourself. 100%. So, uh, so what are your plans to do with this now? Tear down? Yeah, so working moving forward, I, I want to build something on these adjacent lots. And um, in order to do that effectively, uh, just like every other thing in real estate, all of this is a team sport. You need your power team, but you also need to know where the direction of the city is going um, in order to develop appropriately, right sizing. Um, if I were to just throw, I don't know, like a, something that doesn't fit at all here, um, it, it would not, first of all, make any money. It would probably just get damaged all the time or just be un, unused or it would just be a complete wasted project. So you need to figure out what the city wants. So in this case, uh, we have a rapid transit corridor going in in London and they're trying to increase the density in this part of town um, and increase the transit. So for something like that, we're just brainstorming with uh, the city, uh, city councillors and planning, just trying to figure out what could actually go here. Maybe it could be a quick shop, coffee shop with a bus stop and uh, the BRT, rapid transit type of thing outside on the main floor. Maybe some quick uh, flower shop, gift card, that, that, that type of thing. Uh, maybe some residential uppers, maybe 12 units up, two, one or two or three main units on the commercial. Um, on the commercial main floor, sorry. Something like that, and it's just trying to figure out when you work with the people that could really <laughs> block all of this progress and give them what they want, and, and it gives you a, a sweet opportunity to make some money too, and uh, also change the landscape of this part of town. Um, why not? Like, why not work with that team? So it's a win-win for everyone. And from my channel, a lot of you have seen that the type of stuff that I buy. It's because of this. Every single property I've ever bought has been kind of the worst property on the street for the most part. And pretty much every single time the neighbors come by, they're super happy with the changes and the progress. We have like the police come by, like on my, in my apartment building, the police have their own key, but they're like, um, we don't even need it. Like this, this building's fantastic. Like everything's changed. The whole neighborhood has changed because of the changes that you can make. And sometimes it's not about evictions. It's not about kicking out people. It's just about setting the bar and setting behavior standards. As an example, uh, Peeing outside is unacceptable, you know? Some people just need to be reminded of that, and that's okay. But once that bar is set, and you enforce it through N5s, or calling the police, or whatever you need to do, set that bar and hold it to that standard, and slowly increase it, and you see the changes, so. That's kind of where we're at. Awesome. What is that process, so just going back a little bit, like working with the city councillors and stuff, you said like you're brainstorming with them. Are you like up and on Zoom calls? Or are you like actually meeting up with them? Like what's that kind of process like? And, and how much back and forth is there to get done what you want to get done as well as like what the city wants to get done? So going into this, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing at all. Um, I just basically submitted a demo permit actually with the help of uh, Victoria, who I'll, I'll tag her after. Um, fantastic. She helped me through that because I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, after that, we ran into basically a roadblock right away of this is a heritage building. Is it worth saving? Questionable, you know? Let's, uh, let's maybe save some of this uh, original two by four wood. Cool. Is it worth preserving? Peter's gonna get some pictures for you for, from the outside. That's not, I'm not a heritage ex expert, so you know, we'll get to that. Um, but that's, that's kind of where it started. I didn't know what I was doing. Most times you don't need to know, you just need to find out who knows. So moving from there, uh, talking to other people who have kind of been through this process, uh, there's a counselor for obviously different parts of the city. Find out from that counselor what they're trying to represent and push forward. And if you are able to support what they're already pushing, that's already a win. He can now go, or she can now go and say, hey look, this is my BRT rapid transit proposal. I want to densify this area. I want to do this. By the way, I already have an investor lined up who's going to help me do that with this development. Cool. 
uh, how you get those calls. Um, email the city. They'll point you in the right direction. From there, it's setting up a Zoom call. I didn't, I didn't meet anyone in person. It's just like, I don't know, a phone call, 15 minutes, Zoom call, 20 minutes, whatever. Everyone's busy, right? So you just try to get all the questions banged out, get as much information as you can back, and then move from there. So that, that's kind of where it's at right now. I'm collecting information, trying to figure out what to do. I don't know what the hell I'm doing next. I'll figure it out, that's fine. Um, the point is, don't be scared to take these steps because you don't know what you're doing. Just do it. There's people to help. You have a good network, <laughs> just move on. That's why you're on this YouTube page. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of it for now. Awesome. Yeah, really appreciate this, James. And where can, if people want to connect with you or follow you along your journey and see the process of all this, where can people connect and follow you? Instagram's the best place, uh, james.ferns, F-E-R-N-Z. And uh, from there, I have my link tree and you can go to my website and all this other stuff. But uh, for now, you're, on, you're in the right spot. You got, you got the right place. So uh, learn as much as you can.